Hello everyone, today we're gonna go over flipping the tires and completing the step counter. Alrighty, let's quickly go over the step counter mission first, since it is very simple. In my 595 points video, my robot pushes the step counter slider really quickly and smoothly. Here's how it works. On the step counter, there is this pendulum. If the robot pushes the slider too quickly, the pendulum moves to lock the slider from moving. This attachment basically stops the pendulum from moving. On the attachment, there are these two long rows of beams. These beams sandwich the pendulum and prevents the pendulum from moving, which also prevents the pendulum from locking the slider. Watch how the attachment prevents the pendulum from moving. And since this mechanism is only pushed by the robot and not actually connected to the robot, after the robot finishes this mission, it just leaves the mechanism there. Now let's get into what I think is the hardest mission, flipping the tires. Here's the attachment I used to flip the big tire. Let's explain it in two parts. There is one mechanism to lift the tire up and another mechanism to flip it. Let's go over the lift mechanism first. Here's what the first mechanism looks like when taken off of the attachment. It's basically a grab and lift mechanism. Using one motor, you can both grab something and lift it up at the same time. Here's how it works. The grab and lift mechanism basically works by transferring energy to different places at different times. Let's take a look at these two yellow gears. Let's call the gear up here, the grabbing gear, and the gear over here, the lifting gear. The grabbing gear controls the opening and closing of the claws. As you can see, it is connected to each of the claws with this system of gears. First, when the claw is opened like it is now, energy is transferred to the grabbing gear to close the claw. As you can see, now that the claw is closed, the grabbing gear can no longer be turned in the same direction. That means that energy is no longer transferred to it. And since energy can no longer be transferred to the grabbing gear, energy is now transferred to the lifting gear to lift the claw. Now, as you can see, energy is only transferred to the lifting gear. The grabbing gear doesn't move. Only the lifting gear does. In summary, the mechanism used to grab and lift the big tire works by transferring energy to different places. Energy is first transferred to the grabbing gear to close the claw. After the claw is closed, the grabbing gear is locked and the energy can no longer be transferred to it. Now, energy is transferred to the lifting gear to lift the claw. This is what causes the grabbing and lifting. The second part is the flipping mechanism. As you can see, the claw holds the tire using these two arc pieces. On each of the arc pieces, there are these pointy pieces and these tires to grip the big tire. Here's another view of how these pointy pieces and these tires hold on to the big tire. And now, as you can see, each of these arc pieces is connected to the claw using these hinges. And you may notice that the hinge is actually below the arc piece. So up here is the arc piece, and down here is the hinge. The hinges below the arc pieces, along with the wheels on top of the arc pieces, cause imbalance. Watch how, as the claw is lifted up, this imbalance causes gravity to flip the arc pieces and flip the tire. And so, the lifting mechanism and the flipping mechanism work together to flip the big tire. You'll notice that there are a lot of gears powering this attachment. Since the tire is heavy, a lot of torque, or rotational power, is needed to lift it. These gears back here are organized in small to large gear ratios, which generate more torque but slows down the movement. If you want to learn more about gear ratios, I have already made a video about them. After the big tire is flipped over, this beam falls down to put the figure onto the tire. Since the small tire is allowed to be taken back to base, my robot takes it back to base instead of flipping it because it's easier to flip the small tire by hand. 
Because the best way to learn about mechanisms is to actually build them, I have linked the PDF instructions below. However, there is something really important to keep in mind when building these mechanisms. Because Studio is not perfect, there are two ways that the instructions are different from the actual mechanism. First, these two beams are not connected, while on the actual attachment, they are. So to connect these two beams, all you need to do is take a frictionless pin, put it here, and connect the beams. Second, there is no tire in studio. And so all you gotta do is take this wheel and attach it right here. I hope this video helped your team out. If you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe for more tutorials coming out in the future about completing FLL replay missions.